as we continue the coverage of the activities of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Arise correspondents Roger Zuderi and Rolaki Akinkobe Fulani join me now and they're joined by Boston Tijani, who is Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital e Economy. It's great to see you again, Rolaki and Rotus and Honorable Minister Boston Tijani. Yes. Thank you very much, Abby. As you said, we're joined today by the Honorable Minister for ICT and Digital Economy of Nigeria, Dr. Bosna Tijani, here at the World Economic Forum in Davos in 2024. Great to have you with us on the oh, show. My pleasure, Alaka. Great. So I guess my first question is, what has been your take on the theme, Rebuilding Trust, and which sessions have stood out for you and why? Which ones have struck a chord with you? Um, I think the theme is extremely profound, if I can say that. Uh, because we live at a time when our world is a lot more connected and that connectivity means that we can share more widely okay. uh, so which means nothing is truly hidden anymore so mm -hmm. there's that lack of trust between people and you know then people and government as well uh, which means there's much more work for public leaders to mm -hmm. actually help build a society uh, that is a lot more resilient because people don't want to believe what they see out there anymore. <laughs> Indeed. And speaking of trust, you know, one of the initiatives you have is the digitization plan in the public sector. And Absolutely. I think that's a really important element of building trust between the public and the private sector. Yes. So can you tell us a bit about that and how you hope it will advance your goals? And I think it's one of those things. So the first thing I noticed uh, after joining government, you know, if you understand my background, was how much innovation was going on within the public sector quite significant that we don't talk about. When you, when you talk innovation in the public space in Africa, uh, things like M-Pesa will come to mind. But no one talks about the Nigerian Interbank Exchange System, which mm -hmm. has more users on it than the M-Pesa. Right? When we talk innovation, you know, people would always look at the negative side of the uh, NIN. You know? But no one is talking about what the NIN is now allowing us to be able to do as a nation. Of course, it was a painful ex exercise. Right? It was a painful exercise. But what we're saying is that when government is extremely intentional with how we use technology to deliver government services, not only do you create opportunity for citizens to actually benefit and access the services, the public services they need, you also create the foundation for private services to be delivered in manners that can actually serve people. Because the core of any society is whether you can identify your people, whether you can provide security, identify properties. Most of those things are services that government will have to create. Education, for instance, public health uh, facilities. These are government services. If you're able to automate those services, not only do they become a lot easier for citizens to access, you also get to learn more about what is happening because once those services are digitalized, they're connected, you collect data better, real-time information that government can use to, to take informed decision on how you appropriate your small resources that you're constantly struggling with. Mm. And I think we're extremely lucky. People don't talk about this enough. You know, the president was the, one of the first governors in Nigeria to actually uh, digitalize government services in Lagos State. Until today, we can still see that significant portion of public services in Lagos State are, are, are interconnected and they're also available online as well for yeah. those who consume them. So I think we have a unique opportunity to actually invest significantly. Government is giving us that mandate. There are a few things we need to do beyond just digitalizing. What I've seen is these things have been done in silo. And when you do them in silo, they look disorganized. Mm. So the, the country actually doesn't truly benefit from a siloed approach to, to digitalization. So we're starting something that we've called the digital public infrastructure, which is building the base for that, which is a Nigerian stack that allows us to be able to share data between different services, then making it easy for the president to sit in his office and actually see what is going on in the country. How many child have been given birth to in the last 24 hours? How many people died? You know, what's happening where? Mm. It, however, it's going to be a long process. Yeah, I long process, but yeah. good initiative. The, um, I mean, for that kind of, for that to work, mm -hmm. I think broadband connectivity Absolutely. is going to be important. Yeah, uh, it's under, it's, I think it's about 45% as of the last August 2023 from the NCC. <laughs> um, you had conducted an interview, you had an interview where you said it would cost about $2 billion yeah. to get that going. Rolak has already mentioned in our last segment, this yeah. fund, um, what, how, where's the funding going to come from for that initiative? So we're working hard to put it together and I'm extremely excited at the interest that we're getting. Rolak, you're an investor so you probably understand how this works. It's infrastructure, so so many people want to be part of it, right? And, and what we're thinking, the government is not going to pay for it. 
but government will guarantee the loan for private company to actually lay because if government pays then we don't achieve our objective mm. not only do we want to secure the fund we want to ensure that in the next two to three years a significant part of nigeria is covered for those who understand the power of connectivity you can understand what i would do to our economy it's significant it's, it's going to be one of the biggest thing i do as a minister okay. you know once we're able to achieve that because people talk about non-consumption the reason why we're not there at the minute is you know the the private companies will tell you uh, there are parts of Nigeria that if I invest in infrastructure and if I put fiber optic cable, there's not enough customers that will pay. But what I've seen is that every state you go has nothing less than a thousand schools, probably over a thousand uh, hospitals mm -hmm. that they have uh, government offices. So one of the things we're doing, I released a white paper be before coming here, is to actually help to reduce that non-consumption by looking for a sustainable business model for connecting public institutions. Yeah. Imagine if all the schools in Nigeria are connected. Just imagine the possibilities. Yeah. It's huge, yeah. huge potential. Yeah, huge that, potential. Would, that, that would be very interesting. So, you know, you have a plan, a massive plan Absolutely. for upskilling, yes. <laughs> I think, 3 million so Nigerians. Talent, yeah. And we're seeing the launch of the 3MTT Absolutely. platform. And there's been a fantastic positive response to it. So, so good on the ministry. Now, in terms of ensuring that the upskilling and the skills that are developed, technology skills, can adequately serve the needs of our economy, yeah. how do you hope to bridge that gap? Has there been an assessment done of the skills skills that Nigeria specifically needs and then matched to the skills that you know those uh, professionals will be building capacity in. Uh, absolutely so NITDA which is an agency under me conducted a talent gap analysis last year which was looking at uh, what are the skill sets required by industry and what are the talent suppliers providing so they, they identify the gap for where opportunity lies but what i like about that analysis is it didn't just focus on nigeria okay. because the global the technology space is Talent global is global, it's, it's global as yeah. well so it also looked at you know linkedin has published a lot of insight on talent gap globally you know there's extremely huge gap in workforce for technology globally All right so that's what we've leveraged so we've started with only 10 um, uh, particular streams and those streams are focused on where we see job opportunities, immediate job opportunities, both locally and also outside of the country. So training 3 million, the goal is not to retain all of them. We know we're not going to be, be able to retain, <laughs> but we want Nigeria to become a net exporter of technical mm. talents. Where in Switzerland, if you look at countries like this, technology is everywhere, yes. right? So they're going to continue to require technology uh, workforce to help pull up and lift their economies. But the reality is these countries are aging in terms of population and they're not giving birth to, to more people. Mm. So Nigeria, we're in a very firm position to actually help power the workforce that the world requires for technology. On, on artificial intelligence, yeah. um, are we jumping the gun? Um, because, you know, you look at connectivity around it. 5G, according to the NCC, only 0.8% of coverage in Nigeria. 60% uh, of the country is on 2G. I mean, as far as the, I mean, I know you've talked extensively about artificial intelligence. It's a theme here. Is it, can we walk and chew gum at the same time? Can we talk about that while also addressing our other developmental issues? No, no, we can. And in development is what we call weaker problems, right? In Africa, we're often faced with challenges where, you know, we have poverty, uh, there's not enough. 10 years ago, 10 years ago on the continent to fix education, we were told we needed to be building more schools and training more teachers. Fast forward to today because of digital technologies, it's about how can you use technology to help teachers teach better? How can you use technology to help learners learn at home for remediation? Right? That's what we're talking about today. So the world is constantly moving and it's a wicked problem because the requirement for addressing a lot of our problems are constantly shifting. But oftentimes we're fixated on what we've always known about those challenges. Right. And the reality is you're here in Davos, you've seen half of the conversations uh, about artificial intelligence. Absolutely. We're talking about the fact that there's no good workforce in the world. They're going to need workforce. We have young people. If we don't prioritize artificial intelligence, how are we going to be able to play in that space? Mm -hmm. None of us expected generative AI last year. Right. Exactly. Do you use it? Like we do. We yeah. all use yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, so, so if we wait and say it's not for us, you right. know, we, I was talking to someone, this is a very touchy conversation on social investment. Do you know that AI can help us understand how to appropriate our funding for social investment better? Because the, the poor people the, that, that needs our help that we're trying to serve, that we're trying to lift up, uh, their needs are very clear, but if you don't understand what they're spending the resources on, how can you better serve them to help lift them forward? The data set that you collect on transactions is massive. There's nothing you and I can do with it. AI can help us make sense out of it. Yeah.
Yes, indeed. And, you know, Bill Gates was talking about AI helping to increase productivity. And yeah. I note, I think some months back, you put out a call for yeah. AI specialists. And I, the response was yeah. quite... Yeah, it was, big, it was immense. Yeah, it was yeah. immense. And I'm glad you mentioned social investment because yeah. I was going to ask you if you could pick one of our development challenges yeah. now in Nigeria, in Nigeria and apply some of the technology solutions yeah. you're looking at, yeah. which one would be right on top of your list of priorities? Because we've thought about social, social investment. And, and the reason why is... Um, <laughs> I've spent a few months working with the president. Uh, this is a man that is extremely passionate about seeing significant shift in society. That's the only conversation that we've had. That's why he made the ministers to sign bond. And he's taking it seriously. He set up an office to track it because he wants to see changes in, in society. The social investment effort, there's a significant amount of money. If we all rally around and support the president's intention, we can truly lift our people up, not just give them handouts. And the more we lift them up, the more we had to that workforce, productive workforce that we want to see, the more we grow our economy, and I think we all will be benefit from it. The Nigerian government, from what I've seen, has been spending resources to try and make society better. But unfortunately, as you're pushing, there's so many things you're pushing back at. So we need to be having meaningful conversations. The intellect amongst us needs to participate in finding ways to help truly make things happen for our society. Yeah, we're wrapping up, so only less than a minute to go. How, what's your outlook for 2024 in terms of the milestones you set and what we can achieve? I see, uh, for, for, for my ministry, I think uh, from the body language we're getting, I think the Talent Accelerator 3MTT will, will, will move on really well. We're already seeing nations and companies paying attention to it. We will see some of our people getting gainful employment because they've been through that program. So I expect that will change the moods among, amongst young people. The other is the backbone. Uh, I truly believe that we have a significant opportunity to leapfrog uh, fiber optic ne network in the country because two million uh, two billion dollars uh, a small amount of money for the size of impact that we can generate thank you very much dr Bosso Tijani. i think one thing that really struck me about is how africa can serve as a global talent pool for the rest of the world amongst other areas we've been joined by the honorable minister for ict and digital economy myself and rotus odiri reporting live here in davos 2024 for arise news Absolutely. Many thanks for that very refreshing conversation. And of course, that was brought to you by Rota Sodiri and Rolaki Akukube Fulani from the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Many thanks.